Good evening and welcome to Sunset News this Monday evening. As always, we bring you news, community stories, economics, weather and sports. I am Glenn Rashipura. In the news tonight, the Owls Road and Frankie Fredericks robot lights in Ventuk Simba Basia have been off for over two weeks, according to the City of Ventuk spokesperson, Harold Akwanye. Akwanye says this is due to the damage done to the lights during heavy rains. There are some devices that we are waiting for that we didn't have in stock, not just for the robots, but some others as well, he told the Namibian Sun this morning. Study Your Higher Education held its graduation ceremony on Friday at the Safari Court Hotel in Ventuk. The institution graduated more than 400 students with different qualifications and at different levels. Anisia Peters, the Chief Executive Officer of the National Commission on Research, Science and Technology, delivered the keynote address. She congratulated the graduates on the significant milestones in their lives. <coughs> it's with great honor and excitement that I stand before you today to celebrate your remarkable achievements as graduates. Congratulations to each and every one of you with the significant milestone in your lives. Having gone through several graduations as a student, a lecturer and a professor, a dean, a deputy vice chancellor, a mother, of graduates um, and now also as CEO and graduation keynote speaker, I understand some of the sense of pride and accomplishment that you must be feeling right now. Do you have butterflies in your stomach and you're not quite sure whether you should laugh or cry or how to sit or how to behave and you can't wait for the party that's going to be after this? No? Oh, seems like you do have the jitters. <laughs> Graduation is actually one of my very favorite events, and I thought moving now to the NCRSD, I was going to miss it. And then this <laughs> opportunity came on, so thank you very much for inviting me. Because, you know, even when the music plays and you walk down the, sta uh, um, walk down the aisle to come on stage, or even you coming in, there is something magnificent about it. Because you sit there and you think, you reflect back on all of the hard work that you've put in. The nights of, you know, not knowing whether you're going to make it the next day, you know, going to work with, you know, watery eyes, you know, having, for many of you perhaps, having children, having a spouse, you know, and, and saying, oh, you're spending so much time, you know, on school and on work, and what about the family, etc. Those are the sacrifices that I want you to look at now, that long road, and then sit down and pause for a moment, you know, and appreciate God for giving you that strength. Appreciate everybody along your journey. Appreciate your family, your friends, your supporters, you know, those along the way who wished you well, your classmates, your lecturers. And I want you to give them a hearty round of applause for supporting you. <laughs> so now that we've paused and reflected on this moment and this milestone, now begins the next chapter, once you step out of this room, of your life's journey. Tabida Shikaka, a resident from the Oshanja Mwenyo in Ruakana constituency, says that they are suffering as they have been without water for over two months and most of them have to pay neighbors who have taps five million dollars per 25 liters. Shikaka called on the government for any assistance to rescue their marginalized community. My name is Shikaka Tabida, a resident of Ruakana in Oshanja Mwenyo village. Here as we speak right now, we are here suffering, we do not have water. Two months ago, we are trying to pay people who are having water for us to drink, but we do not have job, but we try to buy water every day. We are here suffering, we don't have job, we do not get drought relief, but we are living in a marginalized village. We are asking the government to help us, to come and help us with anything that they can assist us with. 
In our Story of the Day segment, Erango Marine Harambe Workers Trust announced a payout to beneficiaries. We take a look at this story on the other side of the break. The Erango Marine Harambe Workers Trust on Monday announced a payout of $13,195,000 million to 203 beneficiaries of the EMHWT. Each employee received $65,000 million. Speaking at the occasion, the founder of the trust, Martha Umati, said that this was the largest payout since the inception of the trust in 2017. Erongo Marine Harambe Workers Trust. The beneficiaries being all permanent employees of Irongo Marine Enterprises. Mostly, most of them are crew members. So crew members on Desert Ruby. So um, this vessel where we are right now, and then Desert Jewel, which is currently out at sea. So most of them are probably getting the payment while they are out, still out at sea, because we do have um, Wi-Fi there. And of course, the, the employees of Commercial Cold Storage, we just came on board recently also so thank you for being here to celebrate yeah. this very special moment with our employees our most important guest of course will always be our employees unfortunately not everyone can be present here as work never stops and work needs to continue however rest assured that our gratitude goes out to every single employee <coughs> and beneficiary <coughs> of the trust Today we celebrate to say thank you. Thank you for your contribution to the success of Irongo Marine Enterprises in the commercial cold storage Namibia. More importantly, today you as employee reap the benefits of your hard work through this payout. Looking back on my term as the Managing Director of Irongo Marine Enterprises, there have been many highlights. One of the most significant being the launch of the Irongo Marine Harambe Workers Trust in November 2017. The realization of a very important vision I had for EME to ensure shared prosperity for all employees when I was appointed I was disappointed then in February 2017. Since then we have had, since then we have and continue to work hard as an EME team to shape a brighter future for our company, to empower, equip and transform lives. Thank you. This makes me tremendously proud to lead this extraordinary company. As you know, our crew is very close to my heart. They are the lifeblood of our business. Without their hard work, under very difficult circumstances at sea, there would be no Ivanhoe Marine Enterprises. In fact, there would be no fishing industry without fishermen. It is on their labor and through their sacrifices that this very important economic sector has been built. Yet, often, very little recognition is given to the workforce. It is my humble and strong appeal that entities in the fishing sector would acknowledge this more and give our fishermen and factory workers the recognition and reward they so deserve. With that said, I would like to thank our shareholders, particularly Irongo, uh, particularly Ahna Fishing and Development Company, the Oceana Group, as well as the EME management team and all our stakeholders. In economic news after the break, the Development Bank of Namibia launches a second recovery scheme. We get into this story on the other side of the break.
Let's take a look at our economic news. The Development Bank of Namibia announced its participation in the Bank of Namibia SME Economic Recovery Loan Scheme. Participation brings the number of schemes on offer by the bank to two. The other schemes offered by the bank is the KFW Bank and Grouper Scheme. The bank was put in place to support larger enterprises and SMEs with a clear development impact. The implementation of these schemes requires beneficiaries of the loans to ensure that they further their goals and prolong their sustainability in the medium to long term. Let's take a look at the financial indicators. The Namibian dollar trades at 18.16 to the US dollar and 20.02 to the euro. It trades at 22.61 to the pound and 2 million dollars and 63 cents buys you one Chinese yuan. By 0.58% while Brent crude oil is up by 0.72% trading at 82 US dollars and 22 cents. is down by 0.58% while Brent crude oil is up by 0.72% trading at 82 US dollars and 22 cents per barrel. In the international slot, China disowns the ambassador's remarks questioning Ukraine Ukrainian independence. Volgende keer, hij die hart van Wintuk. Hij is waarschijnlijk Namibia's bekendste Afrikaanse kletsrijmer, mediaman, filmmaker. Dagia Bond. James Bond. Dagia Abudi James. Schrijver, sociale commentator, grapjas. <laughs> en baie meer. Let's take a look at our international news. China has distanced itself from the remarks of one of its envoys who questioned the sovereignty of Ukraine and other former Soviet countries. Paris Ambassador Lu Shai's comments last week caused widespread outrage, leading to calls to Beijing to clarify. On Monday, China's foreign ministry said it respected the independence of all post-Soviet republics. China is a major ally of Russia and has not condemned President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine last year. It sees itself as a major player in attempts to bring peace to Ukraine, but has become an increasingly important trading partner for Russia amid Western sanctions prompted by the invasion and many in the West doubt its impartiality on the issue. In an interview for the French LCI network last week, Ambassador Liu was asked about China's view of the status of Crimea, which Russia annexed in 2014. The interviewer argued that under international law, the region was part of Ukraine. Liu responded by suggesting that the issue was not clear-cut and that countries such as Ukraine could not rely on international law to defend their sovereignty. Even these former Soviet countries don't have an effective status under international law because there is no international agreement under international law to concretize their status as sovereign countries, he said. President Putin has frequently challenged Ukrainian independence. In a speech days before the start of Russia's invasion last year, he denied Ukraine had any real statehood and said the country was an integral part of Russia's history and culture. Earlier today, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Mao Ning rejected Lu's position, saying Beijing respected the sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity of all countries and upheld the purposes and principles of the United Nations Charter. After the break, we take a look at the weather predictions. Welcome to MyDotNA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Mosta. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind-the-scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss my dot NA cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobiles.
Let's take a look at the weather predictions for tomorrow. Sunny and hot weather is expected in the north with Anana at 35 degrees and Wakana also at 35 degrees. Cloudy weather is expected along the coast with a high of 23 degrees in Valvis Bay and 21 degrees in Henty's Bay. In the sports section tonight, we take a look at the San Clemente Rhinos that survived a tough encounter and several late kicking opportunities for the Ventuk Drought Volviches. We get into this story on the other side of the break. We are so excited to be kickstarting your morning with the entertainment. Everything was happening mm. during this past weekend. Yes. Exciting news. Wow, no, she was killing it already. In my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with him serving the full term. As well as keeping you informed on the issues that you need to know happening in and around our country. Let's take a look at the sports news. The San Clemente Rhinos survived a tough encounter and several late kicking opportunities for the Ventuk Dradval Witches to clinch a 25-24 win in the Mzanzi Challenge. The mostly Mexican USA South African franchise team scored three tries, all centered around their driving mall, while the Namibian host also scored three through left wing JC Grayling, scrum half Jaques Theron, and right wing Kershwen Maton. The Rhinos led 12-10 at halftime. The seventh annual Inter High ended on a high note with Ventuk Gymnasium as the winner of the under-19A rugby match. The final score is 15-6. In the scheduled 10 round fight, Shinima had the better of the first four rounds as he landed punches to Lando's body. The Namibian showed much class and precision, handing blows after blow on the visitor. However, in the fifth round, he paid a huge price for overconfidence, showboarding to the crowd after stunning the Angolan with an uppercut. Shinima got caught with a straight ride in the face and went to the canvas for the first time in his pro career. He took the fight on points. After the break, we get into your highlights. Aina Raisa Kaya alongside Diana Master. In uh, the ANC conference in December, so uh, we are starting off with the cycling. Uh. Africa, good morning. Do have a lovely minister. Minister Monica Mchangwa has said that with the soccer, the English Premier League continued the biggest game being. On that note, it is all our love, all our life. Welcome to What's Cooking, where culinary passion meets expert insights. Somebody must really want to cook and want to cook good food. Immerse yourself in the bustling world of professional kitchens as top chefs create mouthwatering dishes. Join us for in-depth interviews as our host explores the experiences and expertise of our guest chefs. Don't miss out. Tune in to What's Cooking on NTV every Friday at 2100 hours and let the culinary adventure begin. To 
another exciting episode of Iran World Talk. We bring you your latest beer and tell you what you want to first. You don't want to come back. E-Ticket, your online ticket solution for events and event marketing, bringing you ease of mind and making sure that your event gets out there. You are still watching Sunset News. Let's take a look at the highlights from today's broadcast. Tabida Shikaka, a resident from Oshanjamwenyo in Wakana constituency, says that they are suffering as they have been without water for over two months, and most of them have to pay neighbors who have taps five hundred million dollars per 25 liters. The Owls Road and Frankie Frederick's robot lights in Ventuk Simbabasia have been off for over two weeks, according to City of Ventuk spokesperson Harold Akwenye. In the scheduled 10-round fight, Shinima had the better of the first four rounds as he landed punches to Lando's body. The Namibian showed much class and precision, landing blow after blow on the visitor. And with that, we've come to the end of the broadcast. Make sure you join Sunset News on Facebook, on all the NMH platforms on weekdays, as well as on our website, oneup2.com. Sunset News screens on DSTV channel 285 and GoTV channel 25 every weekday from 7.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. I am Glenn Rashipura, and this has been Sunset News. Don't end your day without us. <laughs>